thanks very much. I should be wearing a green outfit, not a black outfit, I guess. You guys are very patient for sticking around this long. It's been a long day already. It's really great to have you here. It's great to be invited. Uh, I work as a futurist. You know what a futurist is? As somebody who thinks about the future, basically it's about this. It's about what we call foresights. It's not about predictions or, or precluding things, but finding the obvious. I used to be a musician and producer, as you can see on, on the other picture. And uh, musicians have one thing in common, which is to improvise. This is a very good skill to have in the future, clearly, because it's never going to go as planned. As John Lennon said, life is what's happening as you're planning otherwise. So here's one of my predictions, the iPhone 10. I'm sure you guys are really iPhone fans, so this is going to happen very soon. I predict that it will eventually be an iPhone 10. But anyway, within five years, we'll have a dramatically different world. And we're talking about really dramatically different. Our brains wired together by mobile devices, which are essentially mo uh, external brains. And we're connecting to each other through social networks. Many of you, I'm sure, are engaged in this. We're sharing videos, we're uploading, we're downloading, we're stream ripping, we're doing all these things that many people don't think we should do. We're living in a dramatically different world that is going to change radically quickly, including, for example, the issue of languages. We will not be having language issues in the near future. This is uh, some sound on here, if you can bring it up. Uh, this will actually allow you to speak into a device and have it come out in a different language in real time. In the next two or three years, many of you will be using those devices to speak German to a Chinese person in real time. And this is actually within reach now. But anyway, this is Michio Kako talking about how the internet is going to be on your iris. And I started again. Contact lens. And when the internet is in our contact lens, you blink and you will go online. Essentially a connected iris that allows you to do what you do right now on the mobile phone. Sounds like science fiction? It's right here already with fighter pilots and others. And we're talking about a world that essentially is becoming a truly networked society. Many of us are doing this, of course, in a daily uh, level. We're communicating with each other and we're sharing stuff and we're using LinkedIn and Zing and Facebook and all these places. Uh, but a networked society means that all of a sudden we're becoming interdependent. We're depending on each other rather than what used to be on some large organizations or governments or banks. Uh, and this is really the question I have for you. Are you ready to be part of this global brain? Because that's what it is now. The fact that you're sitting here from, I don't know, 50 different countries proves the point we've become a global village, as Marshall McLuhan says. And now we're becoming a global brain, creating together what's called crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, and actually doing stuff together through mobile devices. And this is really a huge human transformation. All of a sudden, we're connecting to machines completely different, and they're connecting to us. You may have heard about the singularity, which is the idea that we can have enhanced humans. I'm not entirely sure about this idea, but human transformation with, with technology is right here for us every single day, and you are very likely to see things quite differently than many of us have in the past. When I was a student, we were going into university and looking stuff up in a real library and covering our surroundings with book. Today, you have iPads or mobile devices, and you're doing all this stuff, searching in virtual libraries. And very soon, as our good friend uh, Sergey from Google says, we're going to wear a Google Glass, which allows us to virtually tap into information through a tiny screen on our eyeglasses. Look it up on YouTube. It's quite entertaining, in fact. Now, the future is going on quite rapidly into this world to where we are able to touch data, to go inside a huge amount of information and pull stuff out that's just for us like this movie with Robert Downey says, and basically I think the future is really going to be about humanity, not about technology. Well, if you think about it, technology is rather useless if it doesn't have a human purpose. Right, so don't be overwhelmed by technology that's just cool to be cool, like uh, as we have with many devices I'm going to show you very soon. But one of my ideas that I want to share with you is that I think business as usual is just about dead. And business as usual goes for banking, goes for travel, it goes for insurances, it goes for media. All of you guys are getting music from the internet, not on CDs or records anymore. And you're watching movies on Netflix or whatever you're using. I, business as usual is just about to end. As Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General, calls it, he says the old model of economic development is a global suicide pact. This is not me saying this, this is the UN Secretary General saying that our business model of profit and growth is becoming rather useless because we've reached the end, the ceiling, right? the glass 
part of the ceiling. Patagonia had a great ad in the US two years ago where they had an ad saying that you should not buy the jacket. Don't buy this jacket. That was the ad campaign of Patagonia, the jacket company. That year, they sold 14% more jackets. But they were serious about this, right? You should think about the consequences of consumption. And as many uh, people have said, you know, if the untamed economy, what we call the turbo capitalism, that we've seen all over the world goes on, which world are we going to have? I think we have to redefine growth, profit, success, prosperity. And this is really true now all, all over the place, but especially in developing countries, that our mindset of, of the industrial age, which is production, and the mechanical age, right, which is to grow and grow, produce more. Like in Brazil, everybody wants to have a car now. Right? And uh, you know, everybody in India is, is picking up smoking because that's where you, you see all the campaigns for smoking. Now the new paradigm is to find a new way to grow that is more interconnected and more sustainable. Not necessarily green in that sense, right? but interdependent. So I think your mission is when you get out of this place, eventually, is to reboot capitalism. And I'm not talking about socialism, right? I mean, we, we know that hasn't worked. Right? I'm talking about natural, sustainable capitalism, as Jeremy Rifkin puts it. Right? It's basically a way of saying, OK, we're moving from this idea of an ego society that's about my accomplishments, my companies, my country, my whatever, right? to a biosphere. And again, I'm not saying in the green sense. I'm saying in the business sense that we're all interconnected and networked and dependent. And this may very well be some sound, please. Mission Impossible. I had this great soundtrack lined up. You're not giving me the sound here. Anyway, that may as well be a Mission Impossible because now we're shifting from this idea of an empire, like the Roman Empire, to another idea of a network. Not Facebook, but being networked like Facebook. This is happening now on all different levels. Every business meeting I go to, people look me up on LinkedIn before we get there. I mean, this is becoming a truly networked society, a moving from centralized to decentralized to distributed. And the future of business and the future of commerce is not going to be in centralized organizations. This is a very bitter pill if you already are a centralized organization right, to change that. But now what's emerging is that trust is actually the new money. And I would implore you not think about profit or growth as money, but as gaining trust. Because when you gain trust of your customers, your clients, your business partners, it always results into gains of some sort. Trust is the new currency. That's what you're looking to build. Take a look at the GDP curve of Brazil and the US. And the economist Joseph Stiglitz says, if you don't measure the right thing, you don't do the right thing. In other words, if you measure money, you're going to make more money. But is it actually what you want to measure? Isn't that what you want to measure, what Bhutan calls a gross national happiness factor? This is not a joke. Right? This is the Prime Minister of Bhutan saying it's what matters is not GDP or GNP, it's the GNH, the Gross National Happiness Factor. And I think this is a good way to live by. What actually makes you more happy it has turned out more than $75,000 a year in income doesn't substantially make you happier. There's a cutoff point to where you can say, okay, I've got enough money, but I don't have enough money, of course, that's also a very bad position. But let's think about the symbol. This is how many companies and countries and myself as a musician have run our lives, you know, centered on making a living and, of course, profit and growth. That's not a bad thing. That's the nature of capitalism, right? But let's add something to it. I think the profit 2.0, in my view, is this, right? making a profit together for a win-win situation. And I would implore on you that there is no other profit in the future because the profit that goes back to this is going to blow us up in every possible way, not economically, socially, culturally, in every possible way. So we have to reinvent what this means, actually, to define profit and growing and society. And success is now defined by disruption, as you can see in these examples, disruptions with the Kindle, with the iPad, with this water machine, with Skype. And entrepreneurship is now very often means to find the back door to find an interesting idea and come in through the back door. If you can find a back door like this guy did with Airbnb, you guys know Airbnb, where you can book rooms with other people that are putting them on the internet. Now, every major city in, uh, city in Europe has Airbnb on every single street, somebody's renting a room. 
and the hotels aren't happy about this. Somebody has found a back door. Can you find a back door? Can you do what Sean Fenning did with Napster? Finding a back door, of course, wasn't entirely legal, but it was an interesting back door. And as Richard Branson says, very good saying, the brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. Of course, easy for him to say, right? But we have to have permission to fail. In this society here in Switzerland and Germany, we don't have permission to fail. This is a huge problem for us. In America, if you don't go bankrupt at least once, you're not worth anything. You haven't risked anything. Now think about the paradigm shift. Huh? Self-learning, do unlearning, relearning, learning from the internet, learning from the personal environment, from TED-Ed, from Twitter. Right? This is our campaign for the future, is to actually radically move our education into the cloud, and of course not away from real people, as they have here in Korea, with a robot teaching English, which, <laughs> which I find rather disturbing. Also, not to promote Burning Man here, but to be creative, you have to waste time. Right? <laughs> Creativity is a residue of time wasted, as Einstein said, my good friend. So think about that for a second. If you never get to try new stuff out, how, how are you going to be awesome? If you don't, and you have to be awesome. If you're not awesome, again, Richard says, you haven't lived. Understanding how other people like you. There's a great book called Lycanomics that you should read. This is the engine that drives trust, which drives success. Now, being liked, not in the, just in the Facebook sense, but being liked and being brought in by others is the nature of commerce. Right? And then consider, of course, ultimately, don't forget to unplug. This is going to be a real problem 10 years from now because we're so wired now. Don't forget to unplug. Remember what's real. This is the Venice Hotel in Las Vegas. Americans think that they've been in Venice when they go to the Venice Hotel because it's really good, but it's not real. Right? We have to remember what's real. We have to question our assumptions. I have to skip this movie because I'm out of time. Let me summarize this. This is our future. We have to stick our feet together to create a new ecosystem because the old one is imploding. The old one isn't doing this. Everybody's sticking their feet in a different direction. Right? And this means we have to build a new media ecosystem, an energy ecosystem, a money ecosystem, a business ecosystem, a government and education. And that is, of course, a great opportunity for growth and for profit and success is to follow that rule. As the CEO of Tesco said, lead the revolution or be the victim of evolution. Thanks very much for listening.